Apple has really mastered the smartphone recipe with this iPhone 14 Pro, which includes camera improvements, fresh design, the A16 chip, always on display, and the dynamic island, which replaces the notch from the iPhone 10. This is the closest thing to an ideal phone, as you will see in this review, but only if there was more battery life. Hey all, today I'm going to be giving a full review of the iPhone 14 Pro. I will share the new main features and my thoughts on my experience. Before we get into the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more iPhone 14 Pro related videos. This iPhone 14 Pro that I am showing you has 256GB of storage and I also have it in space black. The color is gorgeous and I love how it changes colors between a soft black. In the light it's almost space gray and looks pretty much like the 13 Pro. Now let's start with the design. The style of the iPhone 14 Pro resembles the iPhone 13 Pro quite a bit, but with a bigger camera sensor. Unless you really concentrate, it might be difficult to tell this phone apart from its predecessor from the back. Despite the fact that the lenses are significantly bigger, as a result of the upgrades underneath. On the other hand, this phone has a very distinctive front design. The pill-shaped dynamic island has taken the position of the missing gap, and the old iPhone design has finally undergone an update. Though the Face ID cutout still makes it bigger than those on the finest Android devices. Actually, the dynamic island is quite fascinating, and honestly, this thing is so creative that to me it really makes it worth the upgrade. It's not just a static tablet, as on most Android phones. As I've used the phone more, I have discovered more apps that interact with the dynamic island. It grows in response to your activities, showing animations for a variety of system functions like unlocking, playing music, setting schedules, and so forth. If you touch and hold the dynamic island while playing music, it will even transform into a media player. You can access media settings in this manner without having to open the notification center. The dynamic island can be used by third-party applications to benefit from notifications, and the addition of live activities has only improved the dynamic island's ability to provide glanceable information. The stainless steel frame of the iPhone 14 Pro has a matte surface, and the back glass is now removable for easier repairs. The screen is coated in Apple's ceramic guard, and the phone weighs 7.3 ounces. Additionally, just like the iPhone 13 Pro, the iPhone 14 Pro has a significant camera protrusion that prevents it from lying evenly on a surface. This indicates that if you attempt to use the phone while it's resting on a table or surface, it will jiggle. But of course, this might be easier with one of the best iPhone 14 Pro cases. Just like we thought on the display 1600 nits peak brightness and 2000 nits peak brightness for outdoors is incredible. The display has a size of 6.1 inches with one up to 120 Hz refresh rate. The always on display is one of the main new features for the phone and honestly I love it. Android phones have had this for years, but maybe Apple is doing things slightly different, but it's awesome. Games look impressive and have fantastic visuals. The updated chipset and display on this phone make gameplay an utter delight. And this screen also provides a great watching experience for movies. This phone can capture a 12MP picture adjusted to your lighting conditions, but with 4 times the detail due to the quad pixel setup. You can also get an entire 48MP picture in its entirety in Pro Row. With a brand new sensor that is twice as big as the one on the iPhone 13 Pro, the 12 MP ultra wide sensor also got a boost. However, the telephoto lens is still 3x zoom. It seems that Apple increased only the primary sensor's optical zoom by 2x, so you have four zoom options. You have 0.5x for the ultra wide, 1x and 2x for the primary lens, and 3x for the telephoto. 
There are some upgrades to the iPhone 14 Pro selfie camera as well. The faster aperture of the true depth camera will result in improved low light photos. The Photonic engine is also accessible to the front facing camera. You can easily activate in settings if you want to capture 48 MP Pro Raw pictures. You can see that the Pro Raw option offers a lot of information. When it comes to the difference between 12 MP and 48 MP, you can simply see the 48 MP picture is clearer than the 12 MP image, which has some image fuzziness. This iPhone can capture in ProRes at up to 4K 60 frames per second or 4K 30 frames per second on the 256 GB and larger models. Action mode is new this time. In a sense, Apple is saying that you don't need a gimbal when recording video while moving around. So this is excessive stabilization for video when the subject is running or the cameraman is running. Action mode works with Dolby Vision and ProRes and enables up to 2.8K 60 frames per second. The iPhone also features smoother zoom transitions in videos. This phone has the new A16 Bionic processor produced by Apple Silicon using the new 4 nanometer manufacturing method. It has a 16 core neural processor, a 6 core CPU, and a 5 core GPU. With a new display engine, which helps in the new always on display function, also a new image signal processor, it has many advantages over the A15 Bionic from the iPhone 13 Pro. For the majority of activities, it has more than enough power for days. The iPhone 14 Pro maintains consistently smooth frame rates in every game I tried, so gaming is not an issue. The A16 Bionic shines in real-time video editing, even with 4K ProRes recordings. The phone hardly lags when you use effects and changes while you are on the go. Although I believe the A16 Bionic has more power than the majority of people require, having more headroom than you will likely ever need can be incredibly gratifying. The baseline for the storage is 128GB, but you can upgrade to 256, 512, or 1TB if you pay more. I believe 128GB seems a little meager when you consider how much room users these days need on their phones particularly when capturing all those lovely high-resolution 48 MP pictures and 4K videos. Additionally, the fact that a lot of users seem to be specifying additional capacity for their iPhone 14 Pro seems to indicate that Apple could stand to be more generous going forward. The only thing that I haven't been impressed with is the battery life. The phone dies a lot quicker and that is a big letdown. Probably the always on display is the main cause for why it's dying quicker. Also the fact that Apple continued to use 20 watt wire changing for the iPhone 14 Pro with 15 watt MagSafe is a disappointment in this regard as well. The iOS 16 is the default operating system for the iPhone 14 Pro. The most recent iOS update includes a feature designed specifically for the Pro model that gives you more control over what shows when the always on display is activated. Apple has made the security screen highly customizable. You can modify the clock's font, add apps, select different backdrop effects and more. You can make numerous lock screens in iOS 16 and swap between them whenever you want. Also new is the crash detection which enables the phone to determine if you have been in a car accident and, if necessary, notify the emergency services. In my opinion, the iPhone 14 Pro is superior to all rivals thanks to its outstanding sensors, Pro Motion Display, the A16 Bionic and the Dynamic Island that improved the OS general experience. So that's it, thanks for watching everyone and remember to subscribe. If you like this video, Go ahead and like the video and God bless.